Welcome back to Centerpoint. Joining us now is Sean Foyt, the founder of Hold the Line, whose mission is to inform, to educate, and to inspire the next generation of leaders to take a stand for what they believe is right. Sean, thanks very much for joining us. Good to see you. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Honored to be on here today. You led that protest, that parental protest at Disneyland last week. It was a one or two day story, uh, according to the coverage of most mainstream media outlets. Were there lasting repercussions of that protest? Yeah, I mean, I think it's momentum. You know, it's starting to build, it's starting to grow. We're, we're doing another one this Wednesday at Disneyland in Anaheim here in Orange County. And, uh, you know, I think the, you've seen the effects in the stock price. You've seen the effects of, of hundreds of thousands of Americans canceling their subscription to Disney Plus. And really the overall pushback from parents uh, is starting to gain some traction. I see. I, I've just told in my ear right now, it's down about six or seven points today as of about 1.30 this afternoon. I don't know what the closing price is. Um, the name of your organization, Hold That Line, when I, when I hear that phrase, I want to finish the sentence. You finish the sentence for me. Hold the line against what? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, after I finished running my congressional campaign, this the Hold the Line was really born out of a vision that I got of, of really an entire group of people uh, standing, and I feel like it was a vision the Lord gave me about about a, a generation of people that were standing up to hold the line when it comes to biblical values, when it comes to abortion, when it comes to you know protecting our children, when it comes to the you know this this crazy woke left ideology that's invading our school systems and our society right now. And so there's a lot of different things that that means, but I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to holding the line on the Word of God. Hold Holding the line to the things that the Lord called us to protect and to fight for. Well, the Christian, this is a great point you make because the Christian religion right now is itself undergoing a bit of an upheaval over that, over transgenderism, this specific issue. I believe uh, the, the Episcopal Church, the United Church of Christ, the evangelical, uh, evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and the Presbyterian Church USA all welcome transgender participants. And indeed, they go so far as to welcome the ordination of transgender priests. It's insane. I mean, what you're seeing right now is Matthew 24 playing out right before our eyes. I mean, Jesus told us it was going to happen. Now, listen, all those people are broken. They need to come to church. They need to receive Jesus. But to getting to the place of affirming those beliefs and affirming that 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 level of, of sexual indoctrination, to me, it's crazy. But we shouldn't be surprised, you know. They're, the Romans won battle over gender. The Romans won battle over male and female. Like, we're seeing it play out right now in America. It's it's reaching a tipping point. And I want to be honest with you, I feel like they've really overplayed their hand. Mm -hmm. Well, the leaders of those churches might say of you, I'm paraphrasing, but that you're insensitive and being non-inclusive. How would you react? <laughs> they tell me that all the time, <laughs> especially on Twitter. Um, you know, I, to me, it's not about, it, of course, everyone is welcome. You know, everyone needs to come. Everyone needs a touch from Jesus. But we can only affirm the things he affirms. You know, we can only uh, only give, you know, truth. There's a, It's a battle for truth right now. And I think that uh, America, and especially speaking of Gen Z, uh, is starving for truth. We're starving for truth. We're, we're living in a day where we have more access to information than ever before, but yet we it seems like we're more biblically illiterate than we've ever been before. Well, that's for sure. Uh, on the subject of Generation Z, you have said in the past, stand, and I quote, stand for truth, even if it means standing alone, never bow to the mob. That's easier said than done when you're a teenager. It really is. Um, it, and this is why, you know, last night we were in downtown Charlotte with thousands of people and a lot, a lot of young Gen Zers, and God was marking them for revival. They were at the altar. They were rededicating their lives to Jesus. And I feel like, the, you know, the answer for America is a revival. The answer for Gen Z is a revival. They got to have an encounter with the Lord that changes their life. Otherwise, they're going to go with the grain of culture. They're going to go with what TikTok says. They're going to go with what Instagram says. But listen, God is moving, and, and we're seeing it. I, I am incredibly encouraged as I talk to you tonight. Well, one of, one of the churches that has remained strong is the Catholic Church. Pope Benedict, in the past, the most recent pope before Francis, said that the genetic manipulation 
is a, quote, profound falsehood. And Pope Francis more recently said, with this attitude, man commits a new sin, that against God the Creator. Obviously, you agree with that. What's your reaction to those quotes and to the Catholic Church's teaching of this? Well, I, I love that quote. I wish he would stand a little firmer against our current president and a lot of the things that he's doing. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that uh, we, we're we seeing Catholics be really strong, and I, I've witnessed that in the pro-life movement. I've witnessed that, you know, in this movement, this battle over uh, uh, sexuality. I've witnessed that, and, and we're very grateful for them. And I, I feel like we need their voice now more than ever to rise up and to, and to hold the line with us. This peer pressure to, to conform to cultural standards and society's pressures is not just uh, relevant to, to kids and to teenagers. Adults succumb to it all the time. We already talked about how the Episcopal Church, the, the Presbyterian Church are all now welcoming transitioned uh, priests. And, but even those adults who feel the cultural pressure tend to remain silent. There is another place they can go to express their views confidently, and that's the voting booth. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really believe what we're seeing. I mean, we saw it in Virginia in 2020 uh, and last year with the governor's race there. Um, and I, I have been declaring 2022 is the year of the parents. I really believe you're going to see things shift dramatically on these issues, C critical race theory in schools, what's happening with the indoctrination, the sexual indoctrination. Listen, even just normal Americans, they don't like this stuff. They don't want this stuff taught to their kids. And I don't know why the left is so obsessed with talking to kids about sex. It's perverted, it's demonic, and most of America is rejecting it. And I think you're gonna see that happen come November this year. I didn't know you were a congressional candidate until you uttered that phrase just a couple of minutes ago. Are you seeing any effects of that in your congressional campaign or in the, in the past? Um, you know, I, I saw, I, I learned a lot in my congressional campaign. One of the things I learned was it's tough to run as a conservative in California. <laughs> but, uh, but I did learn a lot. I learned a lot. Of, uh, um, you know, I peeked behind the veil at what's happening in government. I peeked behind the veil at what's happening uh, in, in the control and the manipulation um, that they have, especially here in my state. And really that, that gave me the boldness and the courage and the insight to launch Let Us Worship during the pandemic and now hold the line. You know, one of the things that's really alarming to me, the statistics are just unbelievable. When you talk about the suicide rate among transgender adults yeah. uh, or attempted suicides, there was a, a study done out of India worldwide which found the suicide attempt rate among transgendered adults was 32% to 50%, far, far above the general population. Now. Many people on the left say that's a result of society's failure to accommodate transgendered people, even re being rejected by their own families. But there's an alternative explanation. I know you know what it is, but the answer to that is that they are seeking what a transgender surgery cannot provide. Yeah. I mean, we see it at altar calls all across America. You know, we're one of the only ministries I know where every altar call we say, hey, if you're battling with same-sex attraction, if you're battling with issues, if you're in the middle of transition therapy, God wants to heal you. And every single time we do that, the altars are full of people. And, you know, I don't even think we've seen the repercussions. There's a whole generation of kids that have been groomed by, by, by disgusting, perverted teachers. They've been groomed by places like Disney, and they're going to grow up. They're going to grow up and finally come out of the confusion, and they're going to look at their parents. They're going to look at society and say, what have you done to me? You made yeah. me cut off. I can't reproduce. You've, you've, you've changed my gender. We haven't even begun to see the catastrophe of the suicides and the, and the, and the, and the mayhem that's going to come. Ten seconds. you got to answer this question in ten seconds. We're about out of time. You have four beautiful kids yourself, and I know they're your pride and joy. What if 15 years down the road, one of them comes to you and says, Dad, I want to transition out of my body? What do you say? I will hug them and pray them and love them, and I will say, you know, and I will, as much as I can as a parent, I will plead through prayers. I will plead through our, our equity and relationship to not do that. Sean Foy, really appreciate your honesty. Thank you very much, sir. Come back. Thank you. Stay with us in 90 seconds, the highlights of this critical debate and a preview of what's coming up next.